All right, guys, in this example, I want to cover some tips to help you with this word problem. Now, this word problem also includes bearings, which is another topic that usually confuses the heck out of students. So hopefully some of the tips that I'm going to cover in this video are going to help you with not only understanding how to solve a word problem, but also give you a better understanding of how to use and solve for bearings. So in this example, we have a ship travels 80 miles due east from port. Now, I'm actually just going to stop, right? So because one of the first things that we always want to do when we have a word problem is draw a picture. And you've probably heard from your teacher before, like when you're doing word problems, draw a picture draw a picture, draw a picture, right? And the reason why that's so helpful is it allows us to kind of visualize what exactly is happening because otherwise you're just kind of looking at these words and it's like blah, right? So our main goal is kind of extract a picture, extract mathematical equations that we can then go ahead and understand and solve for it. So I have a ship that travels 80 miles due east. So whenever I have this kind of like bearing and direction, the first thing we're going to do is create a cardinal direction. Okay, and then from there, what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna have north, right, east, south, and west. Now we have this point here, we're gonna call that go ahead and P for our port. Now it says the ship travels 80 miles due east. So I need to go ahead and represent that somehow. So what I'm simply going to do is just go ahead and draw a nice little line going out here, right? And then we can just go ahead and end and let's just go ahead and label that to 80 miles. We'll just leave the units off for a moment. Then it says it takes a turn in the northeast direction. Now northeast is very vague. We don't really know where it's going. We just know it's in this direction, you know, somewhere over in here. It says you're going to go in that direction for another 60 miles. So again, we have this northeast direction. So whenever I have this, I need to go ahead and again, create another cardinal direction. So again, from this turning point here, I'm going to go ahead and do exactly everything over again. I'm going to do north and I'm just going to label this east, south, west. Now, again, everything doesn't need to look perfect and everything else. Hopefully you're kind of getting the idea. Now we're going in this direction. We're going 60 miles. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and represent this with another line here and nothing really has to be perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just go ahead and say, you know, here is going to be 60 miles. And then it says, if the boat is now 130 miles away from port. So now I'm going to connect the port to from where this boat is here. And I'm going to say, all right, that distance is 139 miles. Now it's asking us, what is the bearing from port to the ship? And what is the bearing from the ship back to port, right? So here's where the ship is currently. Here's where its port is, right? It traveled 80 miles due east, then took a turn right out to this direction. When we're looking for the bearing, what we're basically looking for is we're looking from the angle from due north. So there's a couple different ways we can write bearings. Basically, we're looking for this angle. And we have a problem here because we don't have a way to be able to solve for this angle outside of the triangle. However, hopefully you recognize here, I have an oblique triangle and this oblique triangle, I have all three side lengths. Therefore, we actually have a way to be able to solve for this triangle, which is going to be using the law of cosines. Another tip that I like to kind of recommend with my students, when you're looking at a problem like this, there's kind of already a lot going on, right? If you look at the words, sometimes it's like mental overload. Now you go ahead and create a picture to kind of like represent, to extract some of the information. Now it's also kind of mental overload. I know what I need to do. I need to find the angle, this angle, angle right here inside this triangle. So to go ahead and do that, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to redraw this one more time, but I'm just going to focus on this mathematically. And I'm actually going to rewrite them using A, B, and C, because that's how I like to solve my oblique triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redraw the triangle. And again, you know, it can look very similar to the one I just did, but forgetting about the port and the ship and all that kind of stuff, I'm just going to label my oblique triangle the way that I like to label all of my oblique triangles, just like this. And remember when we have our opposing side lengths, A, this is going to be B, and this is going to be C. Now from this information, if we need to go ahead and solve for A, I know I can use the law of cosines here. So hopefully you either have this memorized or it's on the board or your teacher gives you like a formula sheet that you can go ahead and reference. Okay, now it doesn't really matter what angles we're dealing with. We can all interchange them, A, B, and C. This is going to be your typical formula for the law of cosines when we want to solve for an angle. Now, the cool thing is we actually know what B is. That's going to be 80. We know what A is. That's 60. And we know C, which is 139. So now what I'm simply going to do is go ahead and plug them into my formula. Okay, and now to go ahead and get to this next point, I'm gonna to want to use my calculator, right? So remember when I wanna solve for my angle A, we're not solving for cosine of A, we're solving for angle of A. So make sure that you undo the cosine by now go ahead and typing in the cosine inverse of all this information. Okay, and now I'm basically just gonna plug this into my calculator. Just make sure you're careful when you are plugging it in and then make sure you also take the cosine inverse so therefore we can find our angle A. Okay, so now you can see that A is equal to 5.93 degrees, which is a pretty small angle. And if you kind of look at this triangle, like originally how I had it, that, you know, can definitely kind of make some sense. And again, that's really important about drawing your angles as well, because obviously if this angle was like obtuse or something, you'd say, hmm, something kind of seems off, right? So that's why it's always nice to have a general picture of your triangle from the original problem. So you can kind of make sense of if your answer is correct. Remember, that's the angle in right here. We're looking for this angle. So the nice thing is, remember, these two angles are going to be complementary, right? So these angles are going to be complementary. So all I simply need to do to find this angle is subtract this angle 
from 180 degrees. Now again, this is the rounded version of the angle, but again, inside my calculator, I'm, I'm gonna use the exact answer. And therefore I get an angle of 84.07 degrees. When I wanna go and answer this question, I'll basically just say the bearing from port to the ship is 84.07 degrees. Or another way we could say that is going to be north, 84.07 degrees east. So that's just another way we could do bearings. Now the next question we have here is talking about how to find the bearing from where the ship is back to port, right? So you can think about like the first answer was like, let's say, you know, you have station control at port, right? They're trying to see what is the bearing from the port to the ship, right? Let's say they needed to go ahead and find them. That's why that would be important. Now let's say the other answer is from the ship to port. Let's say they need to return back to port. And what direction do they need to turn? So to find that answer, basically what we need to do is create another cardinal direction, right? So what I want you to recognize here is if this is going to be my due north, this is east, southwest, again, my bearing is going to from, go from due north. So what I need to do is I need to find the angle from all the way to here to here. Now that's going to be very difficult to go ahead and do because how do I be able to find this angle? The only thing I can figure out is how to find this angle. And what you could do is also extend this line right here. And if you think about parallel lines in a transversal, remember we have those angle relationships, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles. So the one thing I want you to recognize here is that angle and that angle are going to be equal to each other. So therefore, if I can find this angle and that angle, I'm going to be able to cover that side. And then I just need to add 90 degrees. Now, again, the nice thing about having a triangle is I only need to figure out one more angle here to go ahead and add these two to find my third missing side. So going back to my triangle now, I'm going to want to go ahead and find this angle C and then go ahead and find my angle B. But again, I can just subtract those two from there. Now, it's very important to make sure that you stored answer A. So therefore, you have that in your calculator. Because again, remember, we're going to want to subtract that from 180. Now what we're going to do is write the law of cosines to find angle C. Okay, so just remember A is going to be 60, B is equal to 80, and C equals 139. Now again, remember we're trying to solve for C, so therefore to undo the cosine, I'm going to take the cosine inverse. So I'm going to plug this all into my calculator that C equals the cosine inverse of all of this. Okay, when I do that, I get 166.15, which is gonna be C. And again, I'm going to store this because we already had A, which I wanted to store. And now what we need to be able to find is going to be B. So again, remember, if I have two angles of a triangle, I can subtract those from 180 to find my missing angle. So B is gonna be 180 degrees minus the stored answer for A minus the stored answer for C. And when I go ahead and do that, again, using my calculator and storing this, I'm gonna go and have a 7.92 degrees. Now again, that is going to be my answer B. Now, again, we have to remember what all this context means. Why well, is this, again, helping me find my bearing? So what I want to do is go back to the original picture so we can go and take a look. So again, remember what we found. We found this angle C because of alternate interior angles. This line is parallel with this line. They both intersect with this line. So C is going to be equivalent to this angle as well from here. That's going to be from this red line to the x-axis. Then we also just found B, which is going to be this angle as well. So if I add B plus C, plus 90 degrees, that's gonna give me the bearing from due north all the way over to this angle. Because you're free to ship at this point and you need to find the bearing back to the port, we're gonna go from due north all the way around to this line, which is gonna take you back to port. So therefore, I'm just gonna take my angle B plus my angle C and I'm going to add a 90 degrees to it. That is gonna give me my bearing. So when I do that, I get a 264.07 degrees. Now, again, let's just go ahead and check our work, right? Because again, remember, we created this original graph here. So if I was gonna go ahead and graph this from due north, 264 degrees. Well, from here to here is 90, from here to here is 180, and then from here to here is 270, right? So 264 is just gonna be just a little bit shorter, right? So it's gonna probably look something like that. Does that look like the angle that I need to go from the ship back to port? Yeah, not too bad, right? You can see I'm in the right frame. It's not perfect. My drawings that picture. But again, you can see that this angle, this bearing here is roughly a pretty good match going back to my port. Okay. So now I just need to finalize again, the answer I did a lot of work. So we're going to say the bearing from the ship to port is 264.07 degrees. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this was helpful for you as well as some of the tips that I had for you along the way. If you want more examples, check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below or check out the next video I have for you here.